What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. A lot has changed on the Softail standard build. So if you didn't see video number one, which a lot of you hadn't because for whatever reason that video just did not get a lot of views. This is the Softail standard I'm building. It's a 2020, 2300 miles on it when I got it and a few aftermarket parts. Some I like, some I didn't. So some things have changed, some things have stayed the same, but let's jump into that and I'll show you what all we've done so far. Before we start, I'll give you a real quick walk around, let you guys look at the bike. My apologies for the lighting. I'm back here in the service department. Not the best lighting, but the showroom was full. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, I typically do bike stuff in the showroom of the Harley dealership, but too difficult getting this thing in there, so here we are. All right, so we're gonna do this in a flashback style. So if you'll remember, these were the bars and risers that were on this bike before. So they were Bung King risers, um, built well bars with that terrible crossbar on the bars. The bars themselves are great. The quality is great, the look is great. They're terrible for that bike, because they block the gauge. You literally couldn't see anything even when you took that pad off. Here is what we have switched to. These are the new Roland Sands Designs sector uh, riser and gauge. So I ended up going with a nine inch riser. No pullback just because on a soft tail standard, I don't really feel like I need them at this height. Honestly, one of the big things that sold me on this setup was this gauge relocation. Now it's gonna be kind of hard to show you, but there are multiple points on this gauge where things can be adjusted. So you can move it up or down wherever you want on your risers. You can adjust the angle of things here. You can adjust the angle of things there. So point being is if you moved it around, you could dial it in to absolutely where you want it. Now you're probably also noticing the bars. The bars are Flymoto bars. I've just powder coated them gray. That is my secondary color that I'm going with. So we'll move on down to these pegs. If you'll remember, the pegs on this bike were red. I didn't hate the red, but I also didn't love it. So I ended up taking off the pegs. Now I will point out that the front are flow moto and the rear are cross threads. I'm not the one that did that, but I don't have a problem with either peg and I'm not really affiliated with either company. So I figured why not just leave it set up this way. I knew I was going to spend enough money on this thing anyway. So my buddy Jake Tinsley at Tinsley's Custom Coatings did these pegs for me. He was slightly reluctant when I told him that I wanted all of these pins one color and the pegs a completely different color. That's because all of these, 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 and same thing on the other side had to be done separately. Sounds like a nightmare. Luckily, I have a good powder coat guy that I trust. So I just turned them over, got them back. Could not be more happy with the way that things turned out. Absolutely loving the gray versus the red. I'll step back so you guys can see it just a little bit better. And we'll go around to this side. Same thing I did over here on the shifter and then this peg, clearly that one as well. Now the thing that I ran into in getting rid of the red is unfortunately this Saddleman seat. I absolutely love the seat. I love the red stitching. I love everything about it, but the red has to go. So I have a new Saddleman on order right now. As soon as that one comes in, this one will be for sale. If any of you guys are interested, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll connect with you through email or something and we can figure out you know, if I have to ship it to you or whatever we have to do. I'm not sure on the price yet, but we can figure that out. Okay, so let's throw it back to the fairing that was on this bike. Still the same Harley fairing, but with their windshield, which made me absolutely hate this Harley Davidson fairing. It just looked wide and squatty and awkward to me. So luckily a friend of mine referred me to this company. Denton Performance is who made this windshield and this is the 12 inch. Um, they come in a 10, 12, 14, and 16, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the size. And this is the smoked. I like that it's still slightly clear, so if I end up having to look at something through it, I can still see what I'm doing, but it definitely, when you step back, definitely gives the bike a good look. I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting on this. The Baja Designs headlight, 
and I'm also running the Baja Designs S1 as turn signals. And I want to go on the record and say that Baja Designs probably has the worst customer service ever. Uh, sent them a few questions on Instagram, never got back to me. Um, sent them an email. They responded and said that this would not work. Um, it does work. It's not simple. It's not plug and play, but it is possible to work. Um, it's unfortunate that they were like that because I feel like I could have said, hey, this is what we did to get it to work. They could sell the kits or at least sell more of these if instead of saying it won't work, say this is what you need to do to make it work. Baja Designs, hit me up. <laughs> I'd be glad to help you guys out and get you going because same thing with the headlight. This is the LP4. LP6 is not a problem. So without getting off in the technical weeds too far, the LP6 has four pins on the back. The LP4 has three. You need four pins in order to be able to run a high-low function. So when I first installed this light, all you had was high beam. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these at night. That's just not gonna work because it literally makes the road look like a soccer field or something. It is so dang bright. There's no possible way you can only ride around with your high beam on. If you do, you're definitely a jerk and all your friends are gonna make you ride at the front because it's ridiculous. Now. Same thing could be said about these turn signals. They are set up as running lights and turn signals. A little bit of work to get them to work, but like I said, we got it, we got it figured out. They're extremely bright, but they're not blinding. Uh, they do light up the side of the road really, really well. And then when you turn your turn signals on, everything in front of you flashes, the whole intersection <laughs> sees that you're turning. But I think that's the name of the game in motorcycling, we're trying to be seen. So that's what we've accomplished and I think it looks really good, really custom. Eventually, I'll do something about this hardware. It kills me that it's not black, but doing all the mock-up and just trying to make sure everything worked and then trying to get things ready for Daytona, I just didn't have time to do that. I'm still running these Flow Moto levers. I do like the look of them, but I don't love the feel of them. After having ridden with them for some time, I think what it is is because they're so, so you've got an adjustment here, uh, they're like the breakaway levers. So if you drop your bike, they won't break, which is nice because if you break your clutch lever off or something, you're not anywhere near home, that could be an issue. But I think all the adjustment, it just doesn't have a good feel to me. I don't know why, it just it doesn't feel good. So I will end up changing those. I ended up going with the Thrash and Supply Essentials bags. I did that because I've never found a saddle bag that I think looks good on the back of a soft tail. So these were the smallest, least intrusive that would still let me carry some stuff. After getting back from my trip in Daytona, I realize now that maybe I should have gotten the bigger bags. I think they're called escape bags, but I've already bought these, so I'm gonna stick with it. Also guys, real quick for the record, everything I've talked about so far, I have bought with my own money. Uh, none of these companies have sent me this stuff, unfortunately. Uh, for me and my bank account. Another thing that we've done to this bike that I'm sure you guys have all seen and been curious about, I covered these in the video that went up before this one, but in case you haven't seen that, these are the SMT GT1 wheels from SMT. I worked with them on getting these for this bike, and in my humble opinion, they look absolutely amazing. Those inserts are removable, and then you can powder coat them, paint them, uh, chrome them, vinyl wrap them, do whatever you want. I'm waiting until I do the front end because I do plan on doing a really gnarly front suspension. Uh, rear too, but I mean, you can't see it. So when I do the front and see kind of how things come together, I'll know what I want to do with the inserts. But until then, I'm just leaving them that stock, like raw finish. And to be honest, I'll step back a little bit so you can see. I don't really hate it. I do feel like it's a good bit of brushed up on the front with those lower forks, but that'll be changing soon, like I said. But I do want to show you, I also did their rotors. So these are their performance rotors. Guys, I know, you know, we're all kind of doing this on a budget and as we can. Save up for the rotors before you put the wheels on. It absolutely kills me to see a really nice set of wheels and somebody running stock rotors. And if you can, go ahead and do the pulley. So this pulley is the same design as my wheels. So I absolutely love how the whole back of this bike 
comes together. I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see it. And that's kind of where we're at with this bike. So as for the future of things, like I said, I'll be doing suspension on the front and rear. Also going to be doing some engine work. Um, this 107 is stock. So it has the Two Brothers pipe, stock air cleaner, no tuner. And this thing for what it is, is really quick. I also plan on doing the brakes. Like I said, I've done the rotors already. And for those that don't know, um, Harley uses Brembo for their brakes. So these actually are Brembo. They're just branded with Harley Davidson, but Brembo makes a lot of components. So I do want to run a little bit higher end caliper. And that may be where I get the levers from too. I was at the bike show in Daytona, saw some that I really, really liked. So. Those are the next big three things that I have planned for this bike. As I said, new saddleman coming, so that'll kind of change the look just a little bit. I got the SDC that has the little bump backrest that's adjustable. That's the kind of stuff you have to do when you're old. Plus, I like the look. I also need your guys' help. So, you know, I did the cool turn signals on the front. Uh, it was a little bit of a pain, but made it work. Those will definitely not work on the rear, at least not with my knowledge of electrical wiring, whatnot. So what turn signal should I do in the rear? Or should I just throw some LEDs in these and throw some smoke lenses on it and call it a day? I don't want to necessarily get rid of the chrome yet, only because when I do the engine work, I think all this polished stuff, I'll just swap out with chrome. Uh, not sure. Again, we'll have, kind of have to see how things all come together. As you guys know, I'm very, very open to your input. Love your feedback. Also, really quickly, want to just throw out there, anybody that I met at Blockhead's grand opening party that came up and spoke, introduced themselves, said they watched the channel, said they loved the channel, you know, took pictures, we took videos, whatever. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. Like, that means a whole lot more than you know. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you in the next one.